you're watching Throttle House. I'm James, and I've recently added a member to my family. No, not you, Thomas. I'm, no. not, I'm not Vin Diesel. Okay. Anyway, if you've been following the channel, you know that I sort of daily drive two cars, a rear-wheel drive Mazda MX-5 that doesn't see winter, and a rear-wheel drive Japanese limo that most certainly doesn't see winter. And do you see where I'm going with this? So this is gonna be a slightly different video where I'm gonna explain why I've ignored all the other options out there and instead put my own money on a Golf R. The Golf R, a car that needs no introduction on this channel. It's seen the road and our airstrip and our track multiple times. And two years after we were handed the keys to one for the very first time, and one year after ordering it, I found myself signing the papers to a brand new MSRP Lapis Blue Golf R at Maple Volkswagen here in Ontario, who were honestly quite lovely. But with hundreds, nay, thousands of car options to choose from as a do-all family car, was this the right decision? Well, I had a lot to consider. Okay, so the first thing I had to figure out was shape and size. Three rows were out, I don't need that much size. Crossovers, the family vehicle. Couldn't do it, I couldn't do it. I couldn't bring myself to add to the NPC beige landscape that is North America when it comes to crossovers. If you've done it, I don't blame you. Guilty confession, absolutely loved living with that CRV hybrid. I thought it was so easy and so great. I couldn't do it. So that left sedans, wagons and hatches. And I found myself squeezing to so many little parking spots downtown that really hatch was the only way left for me to go. And then there was the new versus used debate. When I ordered this, the used market was insane. Golf R's were trading for 10, 15 grand more than new. And I knew if I ordered it and just was patient, I could get it for MSRP. So that's what I did. And now they've sort of come down, you can actually get them for about MSRP. So I don't have any regrets, but yeah, that's that. And then the bigger question, and probably one that you're wondering as well, why not an EV? Because every time Thomas and I are in an i5 or an Ionic 5 or an EV6, we say, you can't beat this. For a daily driving experience, the instant torque, the lack of transmission, having to worry about gear changes, EVs are the best. And that is still true. I still absolutely believe that. However, owning one is a different proposition. And I think it's based on use case. And for me, I'm driving two hours in the winter, minus 15. I'm driving two hours home from a filming spot. I don't want to add the complication of figuring out charging. I didn't want to do it. So that on top of some other things like battery replacement, even, you know, I looked into an ID4, not to buy, but just for research, blah, and a battery is almost $20,000 to replace. And it's warranted for 100,000 miles or whatever it is, but that number hangs over your head and the head of the next buyer. And then there's the general sentiment that EVs are moving so quickly and advancing so fast that buying one now would be a crazy thing to do and as a result of all of those things, the residuals on EVs are less than stellar, is an understatement. And this is my own money. We're not good tax people at Throttle House. I'm paying for this with my own personal money. And I didn't want to have to stomach that significant loss that comes with that. Resale is important to me. The Golf R actually has pretty good resale value. It also has a rather potent turbocharged four-cylinder engine, but more on the performance in a minute. For me, a big debate was all-wheel drive versus two-wheel drive. Throttle House has always maintained that you need snow tires. You don't need all-wheel drive. But I figured a combination of both would lead to the most confident winter solution. And the Golf R doesn't get symmetrical all-wheel drive like Subarus. In fact, it gets the front-wheel drive-based Haudex system, like the Audi S3 that it shares an engine with. However, 
Unlike the Audi S3, this inherits the Audi RS3's trick differential, so it can send 100% of the rear torque to the outside wheel, which means the Golf R gets fun stuff like drift mode and even in town, pushing it hard, you can feel the rear come around, so it actually makes it a genuinely more fun car than its predecessor. But because I went all-wheel drive, I ended up discounting quite a lot of fun options. seconds flat very nice can't do that with a front-wheel drive car uh, but no I, I, I honestly I missed out on some some options there uh, the Golf GTI base I lived with in California was wonderfully charming it felt so simple it was quite a bit cheaper and it had the tartan seats which I love you can't get them on the R <laughs> There was also the FL5 Type R what a wonderful vehicle the Acura Integra Type S similar vehicle those are things that got discounted when I only went all-wheel drive. But here now in the winter, the all-wheel drive with the snow tires, it just feels very correct. And I, I share this with my wife, who, you know, is no pansy when it comes to vehicles. She rips my Miata. She drives the Sentry like a goddess. Uh, but we, we both agreed that for this sort of vehicle, why not just go the easiest, most safe feeling route? I didn't tell her about drift mode, but she, and she doesn't watch Shot House, so I'm fine. I'm good. I'm good. I also absolutely love the size of it. I, it's not just for parking. There's something about a hatchback. I've always fit it like a glove, especially the Golf. And I've said that every time I've had a Golf GTI or Golf R press car, I've done Instagram stories saying, name a better duo, I'll oh, wait. I, I think it's the perfect, perfect pairing. With the diff and the extra power, you know, this has got 315 horsepower. It drives significantly better than the previous Golf R. Which was already a good driving car, but this just took it to the next level. Everything we've done, everything we've thrown it on the track, lap times, drifts, it has just done it. As Thomas said, welcome to the few. Not many hatchbacks can do what this car can do. And it's not just that. Not only have I got on with this so well in our reviews or in town or living with it, even things like the driving position, it just feels so normal. This lovely steering wheel with the perforated sides and the flat bottom, I tried to copy that with my MX-5 with an aftermarket wheel. The, the throttle response is better than my S4. The transmission, this DSG, is so wonderful. And that's what I wanted this to be. It's, I wanted it to be the antithesis to the difficulty that was the Miata. Just something easy. You get in and it's easy. And there really is nothing easier to get into than this and just get on with it. And then, on top of all of that, I actually have a connection to the Golf. I grew up in hatchbacks. There's nostalgia attached to this car for me. Uh, you know, my mum has had a Mark 7 Golf GTI for the last few years. She actually just switched it out for a T-Rock, which is less cool but she also had a mark IV, and i learned recently that i came home from the hospital as a little wee baby in my mum's mark ii gti as did my brother so i asked my dad you know is there any record of this and he said yes there is i've looked for hours i found you a photo here it is here's you leaning on the steering wheel of your mum's mark ii gti and i looked at it there it is oh it's so cute and uh, that's my brother. That's my brother. So my dad can't tell the difference between me and my brother who is two and a half years older than me. So that's good, that's good. And dad, if you're watching this, I'm sorry to call you out, but uh, not that it makes any difference. You'll probably get annoyed at him for this video because you don't apparently know which one of us is which. <laughs> me, James, him, Daniel. I'm glad it means the same to you as it does to me. But nostalgia aside, I, I genuinely preferred this over some of the other options that still would have fit the bill because a GR Corolla would also have had the same sort of vibe as this. A Subaru WRX 
would have been a lot cheaper, or a Mazda 3 all-wheel drive turbo. In fact, the car I was most closest to putting the trigger on, other than the Golf R, was that all-wheel drive hybrid Corolla. It would have just made so much financial sense. But then I ran some numbers and I found something quite interesting. This Golf R, specced exactly like this in the UK, was £52,000. That's 87,000 Canadian converted. And south of the border, this was 47,000 US dollars, which is $63,000 Canadian. So, yeah, once I realized that this was a baby RS3 minus one <laughs> cylinder for 50,000 Canadian, goodbye Corolla. <laughs> All right, I don't actually mind that this doesn't have a manual transmission. Even though I like the manual transmission in the new Golf R, I thought it was fun to use. The clutch was good, the shifter was good, the revs fell fast, it was great. But this DSG is pretty damn close. This is a big statement to Porsche's PDK. The shifts are so quick. Down shifts. Up shifts quick. It's just, it's a fun transmission to use. And when you're not driving like an idiot, like this, running it right to the red line in every gear, downshifting with the paddles, it stays completely out of your way. It's very, very easy to use. Here's the thing. Every time we've ever driven the Golf R and compared it to all the rivals that James was talking about, we came away at the end of the day saying, that's the one that I would buy. And James actually did it. He put his money where his mouth is. He bought a Golf R. And you know what? He made the right choice. I can't believe I'm admitting that, but he made the right choice. I think this is what I would do. I would buy a Golf R. It's fun, it's comfortable, it's fast, it's classy, it's understated, and I think I might even get it with the automatic. With the auto with the automatic transmission. Listen, I tease, but you've made the right choice. Well, we know that because we said that the first time we ever filmed it. Yeah. We all went home and started specking our own Golf R's. Yes. Um, but then this is obviously the spec I've ended up with. Yeah. Custom to me. Yeah, you weren't very adventurous. Yeah, there's not many things you can do. It comes with everything. Uh, fair enough. You can basically choose the color and the, maybe not even the wheels. Can you do like all the crazy colors anymore? Like, no. Like, oh, that's such no. a shame. That was only on the Mark 7 for like a year. I love that. There was like the Viper green know, and like the purple. It was just awesome. Well, I, I went a bit weird with this one. I went with the lapis blue. Of course you went with the blue. Well, I didn't go with it because it's blue. I went with it because of the name Lapis, actually. I think you went with I've, it because it's purple. No, I've recently got into water sports. No, you haven't. I have, and this is similar to my, to my uh, username on my water sports forum. Because my name on that is Lapis in my mouth 69. <laughs> what? Uh, <laughs> what are you talking about? Wrong kind of water sports. Oh, okay. We, don't have to, we haven't got to leave that in. No. Um, no, it's a purpley blue. Yes. It's, this is a Golf R classic colour. And I... No, it is. It's no, 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 it is. But how long has the Golf R been out for? Just a bit of time. Half my life. <laughs> no. And so, th so these come with 19-inch uh, Estoril wheels. They're, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, they're, they're okay looking. They're but, but for the winter setup, I like this. I've gone with the Pretorias, which are sort of the famous Golf R Mark 7 wheels. And it, it, it really works. What's the name of it? They're Pretorias, or Pretoria. those in the know just say Pretz. It sounds like a French restaurant. It does actually, yeah, Pretoria, yeah. 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 Like Trattoria. That's, is that Italian? That's Italian, yeah. we're done. We anyway, are done. This is a uh, German car, so let's bring yeah. it back. So th this is, so, well, uh, as a result of using the Mark 7 wheels, it kind of looks a bit like the Mark 7, but I wouldn't dare say that because Mark 7 Golf R owners love to hate on the Mark 8. Yeah. Oh, it's ruined. The shape's all melted. It's got a light bar. I'll give you that. The light bar is a bit EQ, EQS. -y. I like the light bar. Yeah, Ford Escape has it now. Yeah, it stopped being cool as soon as the other ones did it, but yeah. it was cool. Uh, listen, I don't actually dislike the way that this car looks at all. At first, I was like, Ew, like all they, all the Mark Seven guys are. But then now, when I look at a Mark Seven, I go, "Oh, it looks older." 
I, I think it's that's one what of, happened. I think it's a rare case where they've both ended up looking great. It doesn't. One hasn't aged out the other, and this still looks good. I don't know. I think this looks really, really nice. I like the look of these. Like they're sleek, angry, kind of but it's, understated. It's sleek. Yeah, sleek. Uh, and this is the winter setup. So I've got these Michelin XI snows on it now. So winter beast mode. And you, so you have the XI snows. I went with the uh, what were they? The uh, the, the, the more performance oriented the, the one. Alpen. The Alpen. Yeah, the Alpen yeah. on my M2, and they're fantastic, but these are great. Yeah, I wanted maximum safety yeah. so I could live and my child could live. You... And I wanted to protect the paint, so this is about to go in. I was going to say, you're going to get PPF? A, yeah, Expel PPF at AMP Motorsports. Yeah. So that's about, it's about to be protected. I want to get it to where my S4 was, which yeah. in, in my parking app was called Snow f After the WRX, which was also the WRX Snow f <laughs> and I, that's what I want. I want a winter destroyer. I love the little spoiler on the back. This. What do you mean the little spoiler on the back? Look at the size of this. Got to keep that. It's downforce. It's ridiculous. It's, when it's, you're drifting, why is it so big? For when you're drifting at ten kilometers an hour. <laughs> um, but yeah, some slightly embarrassing things going on here. Yeah, I that's mean, one of them. No, that's not embarrassing. That's super cool. No, it's pretty embarrassing. But if I direct you to this four-cylinder engine, you know, because I'm not advertising this car, I will shit on it. That's ridiculous. <laughs> Where's the engine Where cover? Where is the engine cover, James? No, no, but actually though, like, I didn't know this. Where is the engine never cover? never came with one. What do you mean it didn't come with They forgot to put it on? Weight savings. No, that's not, look, it literally has the little tabby things for it to click into. Cost savings. Cost savings, that's more like it. I don't know, I'm gonna find out the reason. It must be part of the chip shortage. Yeah, it must be, it must be. Um, look, this R badge there. Yeah, well, they did different branding for this one. Uh, they yeah. got this nice R. All right, let's get this over with then. <laughs> get, get inside. It's a little bit like a sausage rolling. I'm going to explain to you why the issues with, I have with the interior of this car are not the ones people think. Okay. Okay, when we first got in here. Nice solid German door slam. You know? It is, right? Boom. Yeah. yeah. See all the carbon fiber everywhere? Yeah. Didn't have a choice. Didn't? <laughs> okay, good. And this yeah. is the extra carbon fiber interior pack. If I didn't want to wait another six months, I had to do. <laughs> Right. What other options are there? I think it's it's like a it's like a fake aluminium looking thing. Oh, I don't even remember that. Yeah. This is fine. I don't mind this. Also, I do mind this. Yeah, there's a lot of piano black still going on. What is going on? With that? Uh, and the uh, the wing mirrors for 2024. By the way, I forgot to mention this. When you lock it, they close in. Wow. Hasn't been available till this year. Didn't that? Didn't know, I didn't know about it until I saw it on the Facebook groups. Oh. <laughs> All right. So when we first got in here, there were some yeah. complaints we had. Yeah. And some of them are still valid for certain things. Most of them so are still valid. So this yeah. one's not lit, this slider. No, it's also a slider. It's also a slider. Yeah. Which is fine. No, it's not. Uh, actually, I have a quote from you. Play the clip. Forget about the weird infotainment. Forget about the haptic feedback. Who cares about the lack of a volume knob? You said it doesn't matter that it doesn't have a volume button. Damn it. Quote. Uh, uh, the, but the issue you, you, you ran into on track was you started knocking these capacitive well, the, touch buttons. The biggest one is that like th this button here comes so close to where your palm would be if you were at nine and three. Yes. So not just on a track, but like Canyon Run and stuff, right? And if you click that R button, it will change the mode that you happen to be in. But for all the issues we ha I have with this, there's a fix. So that one, you just tape the wheel. Right, right, right. It's like a, like a hockey tape. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, just it's like before, before, just the, before the game. Yeah. You tape it up. Yeah, yeah 100%. Um, and then, so uh, issues that I've actually run, that's it really. And this being a slide is not a thing. Honestly, the fact that it's not lit, is not an issue. You just do this and you remember mm, where those are. still pretty dumb. Also, I don't like that to turn my heated and cooled seats on, it's a touch and then a touch. Even when you said that, it sounded like such a small issue. It isn't though. No, I listen, it I don't isn't. disagree. I don't use this word often. I know it's frowned upon in current society because I'm using the R word is bad. But some of the decisions that have been made about this car are ridiculous. Oh. I don't know why they've gone about it the way they have and they could have gone more simple. VW is supposed to be the guys that make, yes. make something that just makes sense. It just makes sense. Don't yeah. mess with it. It was fine. So here are my actual issues. Okay. Number one. Yeah. This up, when I first drove the base GTI in California, yeah. I said that I missed the dynamic dampers and I missed the fact that it, had, it didn't have the upgraded sound system. Yes. I was wrong about one of those things. This Harman Kardon sound system yeah. is terrible. Oh. And in fact, on our Clubhouse Discord, yeah. we ha we'd started a roast my car section. We did, and, and I, so, I was too afraid to roast anybody. Yeah. I felt bad immediately. Everyone's been way too nice on there. <laughs> yeah. But one guy posted a Golf Four, and I was like, was that "Sound system made of twigs." <laughs> Great uh, roast, James. And I just felt too <laughs> <Boom>, roasted <laughs> because he didn't know that I also felt his pain. And there's a certain yeah. EQ you can put the Harman Kardon out that makes it a bit better. Yeah, but it's a not good enough 
upgrade of a sound system. Uh, and the only other fix that I've figured out for it is that same thing I did when I was 17 in my Vauxhall Corsa. I don't want to know. I don't know about that. Only, only play stuff that's trebly. So it. that's why I listened to the Beatles on repeat <laughs> right, I until see. I was about 19. Yeah. Okay. So that's the other thing. Yeah. The, other, the other issues are some things just don't seem to want to work. The uh, first of all, this wireless charger takes a leaf out of the X7's book. Or every other wireless charger ever. Yeah, it boils my phone and then it gives up and says, uh, please move some of the stuff that's blocking the phone in the area when nothing is blocking it. It's just its way of saying 100% <laughs> it's you. It's you. And it, stops, it refuses to charge. <laughs> it's got to be the biggest sham in yeah. modern cars is char wireless chargers. The, the wireless CarPlay works. So okay. my MX-5, it, it just drops. <laughs> works? It, it, Question mark. Sometimes phone calls and audio decide, nah. 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 And then I have to do the handset on speaker. And then yeah. other times, just with music, you'll be listening to music and it'll just, it'll just go over there for a minute. <laughs> We'll just go in the corner. You have Elton John. Blast. Hi, I'm here. Yeah, it will go. <laughs> and then it doesn't come back as quickly. It slowly makes its way back. You don't notice it until it does it again 20 minutes later. That is the most ridiculous yeah. software issue I've ever heard. And those are the actual issues because I've, I've got used to the interface. Yeah. I, I really like the gauge cluster. Mm -hmm. It's quite, you know, quite customizable with all yeah. the different views. Um, it's still not satisfying to press a capacitive touch steering wheel. No, no, no question. Um, and maybe I'm the schmuck because for the next year, for 2025 model year, they're bringing back physical buttons on the steering wheel. So I'm going to look at maybe uh, retrofitting if I can. If I remember right, yeah, so to turn the traction control off, you have to swipe down. No, not anymore. It's more hidden now. No, it isn't. Yes, That's it where is. it used to be. Where, yeah. where is it now? Uh, now it's in... Mo Oh, no, it's here. You go, you press this little iPhone button. Yeah. And you go to vehicle. Okay. And so then when you're in vehicle. Two minutes. Okay. You go to. You have to swipe. There. S sorry. Sorry. All right. Sorry, just back up for a second. No, it's a very simple seven step process. No, I just need to know that, it, that I just want the, the world to know that the Volkswagen has put the traction control system under a subheading under exterior of brakes. called brakes. Yeah. That's where the ESCs... Okay, yeah, that's done. But we realized afterwards that the widgets are changeable in the dropdown. So yeah, you can just replace the widgets that are currently there and put the ESC back in the dropdown. It's still a few clicks, but it's not seven. So, as I said, some of the things are a bit strange. However, for my... Great car, though. Great car. It's a fantastic no, car. No, it is. It is. Really, I actually really like it. I'd still probably buy it. All right. Conclusion time. Okay, so money where my mouth is and all that. I did it, I bought the Golf. Was it the only option? No, but in the end, it was the one that made the most sense in my mind. From the season and sharing friendly memory heated and ventilated seats to the compact size and the pep and the DSG transmission, it just fits my life like a glove. Will that change? I don't know, to be honest. Will a German hatchback that already has forums and Facebook groups full of little electrical gremlins be good to me? Um, watch this space, I guess. Thanks for watching. Maybe you haven't had enough of us. Maybe that video just didn't scratch the itch. Well, on Throttle Clubhouse, we do live Q and A's. We do, you can ask us questions. And then, we'll answer them. Anything you want. Anything you want. No, not anything. Anything you want.